video, we saw that hormones have a big role in uh, organizing the effects of our genitals, and we'll find out that they also seem to have a pretty big role in organizing our brain. Um, so I wanted to talk about something called an intersexual. Uh, since in the past they called them hermaphrodites, and the reason why they called them hermaphrodites was because supposedly it was a union between Hermes and Aphrodite, and it produced a child with um, an inter like a mixture of male and female genitals. So an intersexual is a person that doesn't have clearly uh, male genitals or female genitals or something is not quite what we consider normal male genitals or uh, normal female genitals. And um, so here's some examples. So we learned in the last, um, the last video that all of the same tissue uh, is molded into either male genitals or female genitals. And so here's some genitalia that's like kind of intermediate. So this looks like a labia here and a clitoris, but it looks like an enlarged clitoris. Here you have uh, what looks like a penis with breast. Here, um, this one again, you're seeing a labia, but the clitoris kind of looks like a uh, penis. But there are, um, there's 80 different types of intersexuals. And so if someone says, I'm intersexual, um, there's a huge variety of uh, different types. Um, we're going to be going over some of the main types, but I know that there's definitely uh, many different uh, things that can happen as a result of the hormones in the womb or other things going on in the womb during the first trimester. So that's a key point here is that intersexuality seems to be caused by um, abnormalities in the first trimester of pregnancy. So this is the most common cause of the intersex condition. It's called congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And um, the adrenal glands are overdeveloped, and then this leads to extra testosterone production. And so the female becomes partially uh, masculinized. So I like this slide because uh, it shows how common it is. An estimated one out of 100 children is born with some degree of genital ambiguity. One in 2,000 has had enough genital ambiguity to make the sex uncertain. Um, <clears throat> due to hospital confidentiality, intersex people have had trouble finding others like themselves. The Internet is changing that, and I found a really nice video <clears throat> to share with you guys about what it might feel like to be intersexual. Um, so this is uh, a segue into our next phase. So we're talking about how the first trimester, the hormones organize the genitals. But then what we're going to go to next is we're going to go to the hypothalamus, which is probably the second trimester, and then the cortex, which is the third trimester. Um, brains of genetic females with CAH were exposed to higher levels of testosterone during prenatal and early postnatal life. Toy preference intermediate between preferences of non-CAA boys and girls. During adolescence, CAA girls showed interest in between those of typical males and females. They have a little bit more physical aggression in adulthood and they have more of a preference for rough sports. So our next uh, video is going to be talking about uh, differences between childhood play and how that may relate to sexual orientation. Uh, another type of um, intersexual is um, the androgen insensitivity or testicular feminization. So basically this is a person with an XY and they have normal um, androgens but they seem to um, lack the receptor that enables it to masculinize them. So um, sometimes they have completely female appearances, but then if you were to go into the uh, vagina, it could, it just ends in nothing. There's no womb or anything there. Um, like I said, there's 80 different types 
And so there's going to be a range of the genitals with somebody with androgen sensitivity. Um, so this is kind of interesting. In the past, they recommended that intersex children be reared as girls. So when we start talking about a transgendered person, which is somebody who feels like um, my brain got trapped in the wrong body, so my body looks male, but I feel like I'm a female, or my body looks female and I feel like I'm going to be a male, that I should be a male. And um, this is interesting, we can relate these two here, is actually um, you have to, in order to get the gender reassignment surgery, you have to live longer, um, more successfully for a transition from one to the other. So one of them has to only live successfully for a year before they can get granted the gender reassignment surgery. The other one has to live um, successfully for a year and a half. Can you figure out which one? Would it be the male to female? Is it more difficult to transition from male to female? Or is it more difficult to transfer from me female to male? It's actually from male to female. So it seems like um, our thinking is that it's easier for women to transition to men than it is for men to transition to women. And this might be one of the thought patterns where they recommended that the intersex children be reared as girls because it would be easier for a girl to transition to a boy if she decided at puberty because remember at puberty we have organizing effects and a lot of times we don't know exactly about our sexual orientation, about our gender preferences all the way until puberty for the second set of organizing effects. Um, so they, maybe it was easy, maybe the thinking was it's easier for a girl to transition to a boy than to be raised as a boy and then have to transition to a girl. Um, as you can see, the surgery was often performed to make them look more feminine. Uh, children consistently res uh, raised as female would accept that identity. It's not the case, though. Genetic males were born with colloquial extrophy and were raised as girls developed typical male interest and asked to be reassigned as males. So basically, this is the problem with intersexuality is we don't know what their brain is, and maybe their brain, maybe they don't even want to be assigned as male or female. Maybe it's they eventually grow up and they say, no, I want to own my own form of gender. I don't want to fall into the male category or the female category. So basically, um, they have some here, current guidelines. Be honest with the person and family, okay? Identify gender based on predominant external genital appearance, but the parents should be just told that about what we're learning in class today, that different times of pregnancy and different factors of pregnancy can lead to different areas of the brain being masculine or feminized. Um, the genitals are masculinized or feminized due to hormones, and so um, basically it should be left up to the child. So you should raise them. Um, kind of go with what the child is demonstrating. Um, they're definitely saying don't reduce ambiguous clitoris or penis to a normal size. They don't want to do surgery. In the past, they used to do the surgery, but now they're saying, no, let's hold up. Okay, so now let's go on to, let's just see a short video clip uh, made by intersexuals talking about their feelings about it. 